Hi right, folks, Will at LR Workshop. My 1997 300 TDI has failed on emissions for the first time since I've owned it in the last 12 years. In this video, I'm going to look at how many 300 TDIs actually fail from emissions on the MOT in the UK, and then what I did to the vehicle to make it eventually pass. This year, unfortunately, I had three major failures, one of which was the horn, which is fiddly and annoying, and I had that a couple of years ago, and I would have had it in 2020 had I not fixed the horn, but that's just connection, loose connection. Very annoying because I checked it the day before and it actually worked. Anyway, side to side, uh, brake pipes I'll cover in another, another video. Essentially we're talking about emissions here and no other emission failures in its history. If we scroll down the page here, you'll see that the pass rate for d defenders that are the same age as mine, about 70%. So the yellow line is all the other vehicles and the green line is mine. So you can see that the pass rates have been hovering around 70% for a number of years. And the number of 1997 May registered defenders has been dropping in terms of how many get MOT'd every year, been dropping every year. There's only 268 last year. Slight increase on 2020 though. Let's take a look at the emissions values from my vehicle. So these are the official values that were given with a printout or I asked to see at the end of the MOTs. The red lines are the limits that have been applied. You can see the limit has been varying over time. Started off as 2.5, 3, this is meters squared of opacity. Dropped down to 1.5, then 1.68, up to 3, down to 1.8. So varying limits across the years. And these values are the limits for opacity, 8.2.2.2, which is what I failed on this year. And now the key bit to focus on is, well, a lot of people come here and say, okay, vehicles first used before 2008, maximum level is that, that, okay, 300 TDI is turbocharged, so this is the limit. However, you need to read this paragraph that precedes it. The maximum smoke level limit will be displayed on the manufacturer's plate. Or if there's no plate, this is the limit. So this VIN plate, or the plate that's near the VIN, is a sticker that looks like this, uh, or has a 24R designation. 300 TDIs in the UK that have EGR, which is basically anything from 1996 to 1998, has a limit of 1.68, and that should be the limit. It should not be 3 or even 2.5. Rest of the world spec defenders actually have a limit of 1.89, which I can only believe is due to not having EGR and potentially because the fuel injection pump has got a slightly different configuration. 2005 and 2006 300 TDIs have got an additional sticker as well, which specifically mark Regulation 24 as having an opacity limit of 1.93, even though they still have the 1.89 sticker on the bulkhead. So all through those years of me getting this vehicle MOT'd, only once has the correct limit been applied, and that was in 2019 of 1.68. The 2.5 and the 3, I can imagine where they got that from because that's the generic values. But the other values, I mean, 1.5 is the limit for vehicles from 2008 onwards. Where 1.8 came from, I don't know. But in reality, the green lines show that I would have been well within the 1.68 limit all through the MOTs until this year when I got two, a value of 2.6. Just incidentally, the bright green lines are the ones where you get a fast pass, which basically means on the first acceleration, it passes. So here's the context of my values. I usually drive the vehicle to the garage as hot as I can get it. I usually try and get up to about 70 miles an hour at least for 15, 20 minutes. In 2010, I blanked off the EGR and I removed the catalytic converter. So all of these values include no EGR and no cat. I drive about 3000 miles a year on average. And at the point of the MOT, the engine oil is usually quite new. And the mileage on my 300 TDI is approaching 200,000, which is about a third higher than most other defenders registered at the same time. So over nine MOTs and four different garages, fair enough, the limits have been applied differently, but how can the emissions all of a sudden jump? You'll see there with the oil changes, the blue line, that's the average oil changes that I've done every year. There's been a big drop there, and actually the oil in the engine when I took it to the MOT first was about 10 months old. So older than I would usually get. The other thing that was different this year is I've gone to a new garage. I've had to find a new route to take to get to the MOT station to warm it up. And it turns out I couldn't really find a way of getting above 50 miles an hour that well due to traffic and the roads that I selected. So that probably played a big part in the relatively high measurement that I received this year, which is unlike any other year. But how common is it? to fail on a Defender with emissions at the MOT in the UK. So in 2021, there were 97,476 Defenders presented for an MOT. This data comes from the open source access I have to all of the MOT data. Of those, only 420 Defenders 
failed emissions in 2021, which constitutes only 0.43%. But how many of those are 300 TDIs? Well, 15,841 of those vehicles were 300 TDIs, of which 88 failed on emissions opacity, the same as mine has. That's a value of 0.56%. So that is a very, very small percentage of vehicles. So by far and away, most 300 TDIs in the UK, or most defenders for that matter, will pass their MOT emissions, no problem. Potentially could be due to the varying limits applied over time, but my vehicle with regular service history should have been able to pass the MOT emissions no problem, even with the correct limit applied. So what did I do to get my 300 TDI to pass emissions in the end? Well, I gave it an oil change, fresh oil, new oil filter. I cleaned out the breather filter, which was due to be done anyway. And then I flushed the intercooler. I'd last done this in 2010. It's due every 48,000 miles or so. I was coming up to that. There's a fair amount of oil that leaks out from around the turbo hoses, slowly seeps down the front and collects a load of crud. This gunk that I'm tipping in, coincidentally enough, was what I bought originally when I flushed the intercooler back out back in 2010. I was just using it up really to get rid of it um, and tip it out. You can see it comes out a bit dark. But then I switched to petrol, which I think is a bit more of an effective solution. So on the whole, that's very satisfying to see in the color of that liquid come out. I also replaced the intercooler to manifold turbo pipe. It was getting a bit floppy and I had one on the shelf anyway that I was planning to replace. And when I took it for the MOT, I spent 30 minutes driving the vehicle up to 70 miles an hour for at least 15 minutes of that. And it fast passed. I don't have a specific value, unfortunately, because the new garages don't seem to print them out and the, the MOT testers don't seem to remember the value. It was a fast pass because when I first presented it and it failed, they did do the full six accelerations. Yet when I took it for the retest, they only did one. So the value I've just put is a nominal gray column of, of one potentially, but it did improve. Overall, I think it was probably getting the vehicle hotter and the new oil change that had the most impact, but it was a good excuse for me to clean out the intercooler and the breather filter as well. Let me know in the comments how you fare with your emissions values on 300 TDIs. Do you get as good a result as these or are your measurements a lot higher? And what values do the MOT garages place on the tests when you present your vehicle? Subscribe for more Land River content in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.